Well, for the third straight time in Norman, the Kansas State Wildcats beat the Oklahoma Sooners. In turnover margin, <laughs> Sooners won the game on the scoreboard. That, that's what matters, 38-17. K-State, third straight time in Norman, did win the turnover battle. And if you're going to lose a turnover battle, first of all, don't. But if you happen to, lose it one to nothing. Okay, The Sooners only had one turnover in the game, just one. Baker Mayfield interception, really the only notable blemish on his day, um, which was spectacular. The interception, by the way, occurred in the second half. Uh, Duke Shelley, the corner, got the pick. But it was terrific for Mayfield. And if you're going to lose a turnover battle, another thing, compensate it for it in other ways. And boy, did the Sooners ever. Number one, a good start to this game. I don't think the first eight minutes of this contest could have gone any better for the Crimson and Cream. The opening kickoff for Joe Mixon, who had the bad game last week overall against Texas, but he came back with the vengeance when his team needed him the most, got a decent kick return to the 35, and that really, I think, fired Oklahoma up. First three plays were runs, including a designed run play by Baker Mayfield. Hickey nearly got first down on it, and sometimes when we say see Baker Mayfield run, he'll be running laterally, but this one was you know straight north and south and got about eight yards. But the... Opening drive will be capped off with a touchdown pass to a running back, Zamaje P. Run, who I thought was golden on that opening possession running and, of course, receiving. Of course, we'd find out later the reason why, you know, um, P. Ryan's day was ruined was because of a uh, slight hamstring pull. Okay, slight muscle pull. That's what Bob Stoops said. And Stoops said something else interesting. He said, if needed, P. Ryan could come back to the game. But you can tell two things. Number one, they were really thinking about that hamstring a lot more than we know, or a lot more than we might have thought. They definitely did not want to take any unnecessary risk with Piran. I'm talking about the OU coaches, including um, offensive coordinator Lincoln Riley. So they were really hoping that Joe Mixon, from the second possession on, could be that spark, and he certainly was. So if it's just a, quote, slight muscle pull, end of quote, then he'll be back and ready to go against Texas Tech next Saturday. But we'll see. Mixon came back from that bad game. I, I said last week, remember I said, you know, he's had a terrific career so far with the Sooners, Joe Mixon. Last week was just a bad game, and superstars come back after bad games. And Mixon today was extremely valuable. Yeah, he didn't have 100 yards rushing. He didn't have a rushing touchdown, but he was a factor. Four and a half yards per carry, got 19 rushes for 88 yards. But he was effective as a receiver, too. In fact, his first touchdown of the game was as a receiver. He's getting close to the goal line, gets the pass, and then he treats a Kansas State defender like a hurdle by hurdling over him. So first two possessions, touchdown, touchdown. By the way, the OU defense held K-State in their first possession to a 3 now. So like I said, the first eight minutes of this game, 14-0 Oklahoma. Sooners fired up, out of the gates ready for business, and they look so well prepared for this game. You know, Bob Stoops, after the Texas game, win or lose, remember, he's beaten Texas 11 times and only lost to seven of them, entering this game 16-1 and the week after the Texas game. You know, win or lose, the Sooners come ready to play that following week. And the only loss that Bob Stoops has suffered the game after Texas was Kansas State two years ago, the last time they hosted the Wildcats. But they didn't get off to a good start in that game two years ago. They got off to a very good start last year, made it build in Manhattan to a 55 0 win. And it looked like it might even get to that level early on in this game. But the, but the start to this game was so pivotal for Oklahoma. And, you know, another thing, too, you know, your defense, they're coming ready to play as well to compensate for the turnover battle. And we'll talk about that later. But K State, you know, under Bill Snyder, they play very disciplined football. Their offense, as Mike Stoops, the defensive coordinator for the Sooners, will say, is methodical. They'll eat up time. They'll definitely make the run game, their multiple offense, the bread and butter, the meat potatoes, the all-you-can-eat buffet part of that team. Doesn't matter if it's a running back. Doesn't matter if it's a quarterback. Jesse Ernst, who's a tough sucker. Now, not only can he move for a quarterback, but he, he's also tough, too. He's not easy to bring down. You better be a tough quarterback. And, you know, K-State's offensive line, they don't have to blow you off the line of scrimmage. They just have to occupy their blocks. And, again, it's, it's a type of offense that if fundamentally you're not sound, they'll make you pay for it. And the Sooners, I thought, were sound, especially on that defensive front. But K-State, you give them credit for, for bouncing back after, 
you know, happen to feel like they're going to stay a shock down 14 and nothing um, after the first two OU possessions. K-State bounced back with a 17-play drive. Jesse Ertz, you know, completed the drive with a touchdown. And just like that, it was 14-7. But you give OU just as much credit because on the following drive, the OU offense just picked up from where they left off the previous two drives. And Joe Mixon had another touchdown. But this one was one through the air. Not as a receiver, but he threw it. First time an Oklahoma running back has thrown a touchdown pass since 1973. And Mixon found D.D. Westbrook would have another monster day. So for Joe Mixon, we mentioned 88 yards. 19 carries, and he accounted for a couple of touchdowns. He really stepped up when Samaje P. Ryan, um, you know, by by the decision of the OU coaches, uh, you know, didn't come back. And Mixon made sure that K-State couldn't just focus on the Sooner pass. They had to focus on the Sooner run, too, and Mixon really bounced back from that Texas game. He deserves a lot of credit, as does the OU offensive line, once again, who've who, who been a constant for this team, as I mentioned before. But D.D. Westbrook, man, the combination of Mayfield and Westbrook and Mayfield had four touchdowns today. How about D.D. Westbrook? Nine receptions, 180-plus yards receiving, three touchdowns. And the only bad thing about today is you remember watching this game, he knew he should have caught that one pass in the second half, which is wide open near the three-yard line. At the very least, should have come down with the reception. Live scored, you know, as well. But really, that was it as far as things you could really pick on Westbrook. No touchdowns in September, but he's healthy. The bye week in between Ohio State and TCU, I thought, was like great medicine. And since that, you know, since that bye week, three games in the month of October, six touchdown receptions. The combination of Baker Mayfield to D.D. Westbrook, and for one instance today, the combination of Joe Mixon to D.D. Westbrook, uh, had Sooner fans smiling. It's been one hell of an October so far for D.D. Westbrook, and he should be able to continue um, his mastery as a receiver. So the Sooners today, over 500 yards of total offense. That was against a K-State defense, number 11 in the country. And they gave up less than 350 yards of total offense per game. And today, Oklahoma's offense, like I said, came ready to play. But so did the defense. The defense. Um, we know one thing about K-State. We mentioned it's a methodical offensive attack. Well, today, not a whole lot of methodical was a part of their O. Because K-State, as we mentioned, has got to be the run game for them. And they only had 110 yards of total rushing. In fact, no Kansas State player today even approached the 50-yard rushing mark individually. So, And this is an area, the OU defensive line starts with them, where you really didn't know what, what it was going to be like today. Because you, know, you had Charles Walker, who did not play today, but in his place, Austin Roberts, who I thought did good. Amani Bledsoe, a defensive bit, I thought did good. He's just a freshman. And when Matt Romar's in the game, terrific things happen. And that was certainly the case. Even if he's not making the plays, he's doing his job to where other players are making the plays. And, and by the way, the linebackers, got to give them props too, especially Oboe with another QB sack. And even though K-State doesn't throw the ball predominantly, although today they had to since they were, since they were behind the whole game, Props to the Jordans. Jordan Thomas, who almost had an interception in the second quarter. Um, a K-State receiver actually knocked the ball away when um, Jordan Thomas had good coverage. And then Jordan Parker on the other side. He got his first start. The freshman out of California. Thought he did good too. And Will Johnson, welcome back. The nickelback. Hadn't seen him in a while. He played and played well. So the Sooners held Kansas State to about their season average about 340, 350 yards. You can tell K-State's not your typical Big 12 team where it's, we're going to try to beat you in a high-scoring shootout. That's not K-State football. That's not how Bill Snyder does it. Okay, They do it their own way, and sometimes it's effective, but today it wasn't. And the Sooners scoring 38 points against a pretty good defense that you know K-State will continue to get better defensively, but today they really met their match uh, with Oklahoma's offense, which um, for the most part played solid. So 38 to 17, give it up to the Sooners. Three wins in a row, 3 0 in Big 12 play. And right now, a three way tie in the conference as Baylor wins and they win over Kansas. Yeah, what's new? And by the way, West Virginia. Uh, West Virginia absolutely tore Texas Tech big time. 
embarrassed them. I think it was a 48-17. West Virginia's for real at the same time. You know, when was the last time you heard of a Texas Tech offense at home only scoring 17 points? Now, the Red Rares are going the wrong direction. And if you're a Sooner fan, you hope that they continue to go that wrong direction because that's who OU will play next. And it will be a national TV game, prime time, from Lubbock, uh, next Saturday, October 22nd. game will be on Fox, by the way. Um, of course, the one thing you're going to hear a lot of, so be prepared to hear it now, is Baker Mayfield's return to the South Plains to West Texas, and facing his former team. You know, Baker Mayfield's freshman year um, was the Big 12 Offensive Newcomer of the Year, but got injured, lost his starting job to Davis Webb, who, by the way, ironically, isn't the Texas Tech anymore either. I think, I think he plays for Cal now um, in the Pac-12. For Baker Mayfield, if I am to talk about this just for a brief moment of time, for Baker Mayfield, I think he's looking forward to this, looking forward to going back to Texas Tech and playing against his former team. Not only because of the fact of, you know, feeling like he didn't get treated the right way when he was there, especially when he lost his starting job, um, didn't get it back after the injury, but I think he's going to take it personal because, you know, Texas Tech was the school that did everything they could to prohibit Baker from getting that additional year of eligibility, which this year we found out he got. So, you know, Baker Mayfield will be back next year to face Texas Tech in 2017. But this will be the first and only time that he'll get to face Texas Tech in Lubbock at AT&T Stadium. And you know how it gets at night. Texas Tech, you know, some of the craziest fans out there. And the crazier is going to be the, the wackier. It could be even louder. And we'll see if Texas Tech has already packed it for the year or if this game against Oklahoma, um, if they're going to treat it like a college football playoff game and put everything into it. Because if, it's, if you get that same Texas Tech effort today that you got um, against West Virginia – Oklahoma will have this thing won by halftime. But if it's a Texas Tech team that will truly uh, try to step up to the plate, it could be interesting for longer than a half. I do expect OU to win. I, I just don't think Texas Tech defense can, can can hang with anybody, much less the Sooner attack. Um, again, the big thing, I think, for the Sooners, besides the Baker Mayfield angle, is you know, P. Ryan. And hopefully it is just a slight hamstring issue. And hopefully he can play. Um because the OU Sooners right now, as far as running backs, you know, uh, right now, not a lot of reliable depth there with P. Ryan, with Mixon. And uh, we did see Abdul Adams um, play today, and we haven't seen him in action since the um, game against uh, Louisiana Monroe. Congrats to the Sooners. K-State, give them credit for not quitting. Um, it took a long touchdown pass in the end, 88 yards, to Westbrook from Mayfield, longest TD pass um in Owen Field history for the Sooners to finally put Kansas State away. 38-17, Sooners get a win. First time a home team has won in this robbery this decade. Hard to believe that, too. Go back to 2009, last time OU won at home against K-State. Congrats to OU. 4-2 overall, 3-0 in Big 12 play. Boomer Sooner.